One of the great triumphs of mathematics is that we are able to make sense of infinite summations. For example, I can take my screen, I can divide it in half, I can take the half and divide it in half again, giving me a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth, a thirty-second, and so on. And if you keep going adding infinitely many pieces, you're eventually going to converge to the area of the screen. Now, in this video, I want to show you an extension of the idea of convergence beyond what is typically shown in first-year calculus called Cicero summation that is going to work even when some series diverge and it has lots of cool applications like the one I'm going to show you in this video is how we can sort of smooth out some of the problematic spots in Fourier series. The equations behind this series is that the infinite sum of a half plus a quarter plus an eighth and so on which we often write down as the sum of 1 over 2 to the n, that this can be shown to converge to 1, the famous geometric series. But however, many series don't converge. Like, for example, if I took a half and then instead of taking a quarter, I took a third of the original area, the stuff that's remaining is actually less than a quarter, and with just a half plus a third plus a quarter, you get to more than the screen area. And it turns out that if you take the sum of a half and a third and a quarter and keep on going like this, this doesn't converge to a number. This so-called harmonic series, the sum of 1 over n, it diverges to infinity. Now, before I show you the new version of convergence that I'm going to talk about in this video, let's just remind ourselves of the regular version of convergence. If I go back to the geometric series, we have the idea of partial sums. The partial sum is just the first n terms of that series added together. So for example, the first term is just, well, just one half. Then the second partial sum is the sum of one half and a quarter, which is three quarters. The third partial sum is the sum of the first three terms, seven eighths, and you can keep going. That is, if you have a series, you can always create a sequence of partial sums. And actually, our definition of convergence of a series is about convergence of the sequence. We say the original series, the sum of a n's, converge if the resulting sequence of partial sums converge. Okay, so with that idea in mind, that the key thing we're thinking about is partial sums, so with that in our mind, that the idea of an infinite sum adding up to something is all about the sequence of partial sums, let's see one more example. This is the series 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1. And so if you go to the partial sums, the first term is just going to be the value of 1, then subtract 1, 0, 1, 0, and so forth. We say that this series diverges because that sequence, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, the sequence of partial sums, it never converges, it never settles getting arbitrary close to one number. It always bounces around between 1 and 0. And that's great. That's the notion of convergence that we use all the way through calculus. It's lovely. It's very powerful at explaining so many phenomena. But it's a little unsatisfactory in this example. Like, there's a notion if you're bouncing around between 0 and 1, 0 and 1, 0 and 1, the number half comes to mind. The average of 0 and 1. So what if we create a new notion that was built around the idea of averages? And the idea is, you start with your original series, you then make your sequence of partial sums. What if I take the average of those? I'll create this new sequence, which I will call capital A-N now, for average here. And if I take all of my partial sums, the first N of them, I add them together and divide by N, which is just taking the average, right? Like if I want to take the average score of my students on a test, I would add up all their scores and divide by the number of students. So this is the case. I add up all the partial sums and divide out by the number of partial sums that I'm doing. And in this example, the average of the partial sums is going to converge. For example, if I try to write this down, it's just 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0. When n is even, there's exactly half the number of 1s on the top. Like it's n divided by 2 on the top because half of them are 1 and half of them are 0. n divided by 2 on the top, n on the bottom, this goes to the value of a half. When n is odd, there's a little bit more accounting to do. It isn't equal to exactly half, but it goes to the value of a half. So this is a divergent series in the ordinary sense that converges in the Cicero summation sense. It converges to this limit of the average of the partial sums as opposed to the limit of the partial sums themselves. Now, some divergent series have this property, some don't. For example, I'll give you a more egregiously divergent one. 
similar in its alternating signs, but now it's 1, minus 2, plus 3, minus 4, plus 5, and so forth. So if I look at its partial sums, okay, starts with 1, subtract 2, you get to minus 1. You add 3, you get to 2. Subtract 4, you get to minus 2. So it's like 1 minus 1, 2 minus 2. The pattern keeps on going. 3 minus 3, 4 minus 4. This is a divergent series in the normal sense. This sequence of partial sums isn't getting close to any particular value. But it's also divergent in our new Cicero sense. Well, okay, well, let me compute it out. I'm going to do it separately for the evens and the odds. For the evens, I get like 1 minus 1, 2 minus 2, all the way up to n minus n. And I've denoted an even by a 2n. 2n forces it to be even. And what's relevant here is that I've divided up on all these pairs. 1 minus 1 is 0, 2 minus 2 is 0, n minus n is 0. The average of the evens is just 0. But now let me do the averages of the odds, which I will use the index 2n minus 1. 2n minus 1 represents all odds with n starting at the value of 1. But now when I write it down, okay, 1 minus 1, 2 minus 2, those all cancel to 0. But it ends at n, and because it's odd, there's not a minus n at the end. So the numerator just goes to n, the denominator here is 2n minus 1, and in the limit as n goes large, that minus 1 is going to be proving irrelevant, n's a number like a million or a billion, this is going to the value of a half. And so unlike the previous example where the evens and the odds both went to the value of half, here the evens go to zero, the odds go to one half, and in this Cicero summation, these average of the partial sums, it doesn't converge either. Sometimes it's zero, sometimes a half, and it keeps on bouncing around there. This is divergent in the Cicero sense. Now, before we go to our key application of Fourier series, let me show you just one little theorem here. Since our definition of our average of partial sums is built out of the SNs, suppose that the partial sums did converge. They converge to, I don't know, some value S. Well, in that case, you've got these infinitely many terms, the first finite number of them don't matter as n goes to infinity. But in the infinite tail, they're all as close as you wish to the value of s. And so you can write down a formal argument of this, which I'll leave to the comments if you're so interested. But the point is, if the sequence converges in the ordinary sense, the Cicero summation also converges n to the same value. You can kind of imagine there's actually whole families of ideas. I'm just showing you one new one in this video where you take the partial sums of a series that might diverge and you do something to it. You manipulate it. You use the partial sums to build out some other mathematical idea. In this case, we have the Cicero summation, the average of the partial sums. But you can do many things. And so if whatever you come up with has this property where when the original series converged, the new thing that you've built out of the partial sums also converge, that's called regularity. And so Cicero summation has this regularity property and is thus a really nice extension of the idea of convergence because whenever it converges in the ordinary sense, it'll converge to the same value in the Cicero sense. Now, one of my favorite applications of Cicero summation is Fourier series. Super quick review first, so jump to the next timestamp if you are already quite familiar with Fourier series. Here I have a strange function. It jumps back and forth from 1 to minus 1 periodically. And using a single sign term, I can loosely match up its behavior, but it's still a pretty bad approximation. If I then take a second higher frequency sign term, notice that this sign term is low when the original sign term was too high, and, it, and th this sign term is high when the original was too low. So when I add these two together, I get a better approximation. And I can do the same thing again with a third sign term that gives a better approximation. And the remarkable feature of Fourier series is that you can add more and more sign terms and get this approximation that gets arbitrarily close to the original function. Here it is with 30 terms in it, and it's a really good approximation. If you want to know exactly how to tune the frequencies and amplitudes of these sine waves to get the Fourier series, well, check out my full playlist on Fourier series down in the description. But there's a problem. Look what happens around the discontinuity where the original function jumps from 1 to minus 1 and vice versa. Even with 30 turns in my Fourier series, which gives a pretty decent approximation away from the jump dust continuities, nearby the jumps, the Fourier approximation jumps up way too high and then falls down way too low. This is called Gibbs phenomenon, 
and is a common feature of Fourier series around jump discontinuities, that despite converging everywhere, and, and we can make at any individual point as close as you like, other than the discontinuities, well, you still get this persistent error of about 9% the size of the jump appearing. So what we might like is to find an approximation of the original function built out of Fourier series, but that doesn't have this Gibbs phenomenon with the overshooting around jump discontinuities. So let's try the idea from earlier in the video. Let's take the Cicero sums of the Fourier approximations, as opposed to doing just the ordinary sums. When you combine Cicero sums and Fourier sums, they're called Fayer sums by the way, when we do this we get once again an approximation of the original function that becomes better and better the more terms we take. Zooming into the discontinuity, the Fayer summation just sort of falls away from the original function, as opposed to overshooting it, a perhaps more desirable behavior when doing an approximation than with just regular Fourier series and that Gibbs phenomenon. What Cicero summation does is it sort of averages out and it smooths out those spikes that happen in Gibbs phenomenon. Based on our earlier theorem, since the Fourier series converges, doing Cicero sums also converges to the same thing. So this is going to converge to the function, but it converges with a different behavior, notably no Gibbs phenomenon. Now, as a math professor, I know that to really master mathematics takes more than just watching videos on the internet, even my videos, which I hope are helpful. Mastering mathematics requires you to be actively involved in your own learning. And that is why I am so proud that this video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Brilliant has thousands of lessons in math, science, and computer science. And what I really appreciate about them is just how interactive they are. You get to play with the animations. You get to try out the activities and help you self-assess your understanding. If you get stuck, Brilliant helps you figure it out. Brilliant designs their lessons to break down a big idea into digestible chunks, building up complexity in layers. So by the time you've built up to, say, a neural network that predicts what shape you've drawn, you've understood every step along the way of how that neural network actually works. As a professor, I know that this kind of active, student-centered learning is just really effective for your learning. And so I strongly encourage you to go to brilliant.org slash Trevor Bazet or click the link down in the description to try everything that they have for free for a full 30 days. As well, the first 200 of you that do click the link will get an additional 20% off an annual premium subscription. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below, and we'll do some more math in the next video.